so tonight you're going to have to write on this. There's a there's one thing I left off of here, and I'm going to bring it up tonight. But I I did want to do something very exciting to start off with. And I, I um, how many of you brought your Bibles with you? Okay, we've got two Bibles in the room. Okay. Now, I never go anywhere without my biker Bible. You know why I call this the biker Bible? What does it look like now? A biker wallet. A biker wallet. Yeah. So, you know, God bless the biker that steals my wallet. <laughs> He's going to be surprised. What is all this? <laughs> now, in the... Because <laughs> in there, I have all my... I have a... Oh, I have notes on everything. But um, I also have my ticket that says that I'm certified to ride a camel. Yeah. <laughs> Israel too. Yeah. Yes, you you have one. Yes. Then we have the ticket for the ride up up to uh, uh, Masada right. on the ch cable car, and uh, and then my little um, stamped pass <laughs> that said I could cross over the border oh. to Jordan. Yeah, and then come back. Which was scary. I don't want to go through that. <laughs> We're not doing that again. I will not do that again. I, I liked it. I liked seeing Petra. I liked all of that. How many of you know that I'm stalling? I think some people are coming still. But uh, anyway, enough stalling. We're not yes. going to stall anymore. No. But what I what I do want is for um, us to. There he is. There he is. I've been waiting for you. I stalled. Did I not stall? He stalled. I, He's a staller. He stalled. No, just just to him. Uh, no, you know he's my future. Um, yeah, don't make it a habit. But here is the uh, mezuzah. That's the mezuzah. Yeah, so you get you get five of the no. <laughs> Hand him out here for him. <laughs> on the play, no, on the playground. He's not going to playground. Anyway, anyway um, yeah, and, and you guys can talk about how to make a mezuzah case amongst yourself. So what happens is here I have a Bible. And this one, of course, has the zipper. And I re highly recommend these. And then if you can't see the pages, have the eye operation like I did. It was only, only $4,000, and then I could see the words. Uh, I can't read this with my glasses on. Um, neither can I do computer work with my glasses on. But when I'm going to go over to Isaiah 53, and I'm going to have certain ones of you come up here, and we're going to do this. And I'm going to show you. Now, here is my lovely assistant. Yay. Yes. Yay. Come here. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, in Isaiah 53, there is a wonderful thing that takes place. It's in verses 4, 5, and 6. But when you look at that, you see where the little orange things are? We just insert our name there. So read that, inserting your name, okay. and face Sam. Surely he has borne my griefs and carried my sorrows. Now your name. Oh, okay. Surely he has borne Rita's griefs and carried Rita's sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for Rita's transgressions. He was bruised for Rita's iniquities. The chastisement of Rita's peace was upon him, and with his stripes, Rita is healed. Rita, yeah. there's one more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid, laid on him the iniquity of Rita. The iniquity of Rita. Now, who wants to be next? Is everybody reading? Well, they, not everybody is going to be brave enough. <laughs> no, I can't. And 
I can I can assure you that Lou will turn me down. Okay, and then you know what? That's fine. How many of you knew? And I I've, I've said this before. When I was in, in, in university, I was scared to death most of the time. And when the professor who thought that I was really intelligent would call on me, I would get sick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, physically sick. <laughs> and I say, I have to sit down. I can't do this. Well, I, I had this fear of being, looking like a fool in front of a whole class of students, you know, of which I was part of. How many of you have ever had fears like that? Mm -hmm. Now, I, believe me, and so uh, now I call on the doctor's wife, of course. <laughs> yeah, come up here, and there I have him in orange. I love it. It's so beautiful. Okay. All right. Shirley, he has born in Marietta, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Okay. Griefs and carried Miriam's sorrows. Yet I did steam him up from weak stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. Wow, this is hard to read. This is amazing. The chastisement of um, my peace was upon him. And with his stripes I am healed. Yeah. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned ev every one to his own way, I to my own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of Miriam. Yeah, so it's personal. So it's personal. Yes, okay, brave person. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, from the and Saturday. I know, but you know something. For the world. Ah, for the world, <laughs> see you. <laughs> Okay. Still filling out my paperwork. All the orange. <laughs> Surely he hath borne Mark's griefs and carried <coughs> Mark's sorrows. Yet we did not esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for Mark's transgressions. He was bruised for Mark's iniquities. The chastisement of Mark's peace was upon him. With his stripes, Mark is healed. We all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one up to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on Mark the iniquity of us all. Well, I mean, laid on, on him. I'm sorry, the iniquity of Mark. <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. Laid on him the iniquity of Mark. Yes. Now, I encourage every one of you to do that with your spouse. Maybe your children. It makes it real personal. And um, you know, have, have you ever have you done this before? I, I know Sam has, but some people have never done that. Now we're going to do this song, and this is uh, in Shabbat on the air of Shabbat. Mm. This is sung, and uh, boy, you made yours tiny. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, what I did is I translated in pencil underneath the words, mm -hmm. and uh, I like to do that um, in um, here in uh, my little bag I have my book here and um, uh, I went through and I wrote out um, all kinds of things but uh, especially um, uh, the uh, disciples prayer um, and um, you see that Lou oh, yeah. yeah wrote it all out and put the translation under the Hebrew words um, so and and I know what they mean uh, I don't need to do that but say I'm using this to show somebody then I need to have that there because I know that Shemaim means heaven and of course Mark you could do a whole dissertation on this well it would it'd be quicker but Sham 
The Hebrew word sham is what? There. there. Mayim is the Hebrew word water. water. So heaven is what? Where, Where the, water the water is. is. Not the dry place. And so it's uh, Hebrew is interesting like that. Well, and there's a lot of things uh, like that that I, I put in here. One of the key things, the major name of the living God is yud Hey, Not yud Hey vav Hey, but just yud Hey. The reason I say that, and, and I would have people argue that with me, but I will tell you this. Yud is what? Masculine. This is in English. This is not English. This is not like any other language. But the, the letter Yud is masculine. The letter He is feminine. So when you have the Hebrew name Yah, it's saying a huge amount. Not only is he masculine, but he's also feminine. And Yah... The yud is masculine, the yahe is feminine, together. Now, when you look at the very top of the sefarot, you see the yud on one side and the he on the other. And it talks about this, that God is able to identify with the ladies of the house as much as he is the men of the house, He's able to identify with all that you're going through, all that you are experiencing. It's in his name. He, he, it comes out that way. Now, when you say Yahweh, you're saying Yahweh, Yah is. Or I am. <laughs> Now, we, we sing that once in a while, you know, um, and you, you have to be, you have to catch it when, when we do that, but um, uh, so, uh, but it, it, how many of you saw that and you said, that's very, that's exciting to me, that, uh, that, uh, that this is a two-letter name, mm -hmm. and one identifies with me as a woman, and one identifies with me as a man. Now, I'm encouraged as a husband, as Ish, to enter into Ish Al, Ish Ah, the feminine. I'm, I'm encouraged by the word of God as Ish to enter into Ish Ah's world. To dwell with her after what? Knowledge. In other words, it is my duty, my job, and in accordance with the name of the living God to become familiar with that feminine side of me now that we have been made echad. We all seeing this? Is this, this is, this, I, I don't want, I don't want to, um, I don't want to give you too much, but uh, here is this wonderful Psalm 95, 1 and 2. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us joyfully proclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us approach him with thanksgiving and what? Acclaim him with songs of what? Praise. 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 You like that? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you sang that. Okay. Now the next one is La Cado Di. I love this song. Now remember, I the when I was very um, uh, I was a lot younger. I had black hair, 
Uh, but I'm at this Orthodox home and they're singing this. And I left there and I wrote it down. I said, this is so messianic. Lekado di likrat kala Pnesha bat ne kabla Lekado di likrat kala Pnesha bat ne kabla Shemo bezikor bedibor echad Ishbianu el hamyuchad Adonai echad Benishai betalak mi karva el nafshi keala lekado di likrat kala pne shabat ne kabla hito revi hito revi kiva orek kumi ori uri uri. You like that song? Beautiful, yes. Sounds good. But read for me. Someone, um, you like to read for me? Hmm? No, I'm you like to read shy. for me. You're shy. You like to read for me? You're not shy. Come on up here. Get up here. Get up here. I am so dry, I need a drink of water. <laughs> Just read the, the, the English there and do it slowly because um, this is so messianic. So messianic. I'm my beloved to welcome to God presence of Shabbat we receive, observe and remember in one divine utterance, uh, we heard from one, the one and only God, the Lord is one and his name one, for renown, for splendor, and for praise. Come, my beloved, shake off the dust, arise, dress in garments of glory, my people, through the son of Jesse, the best, the friend I might, that the best for my a redemption who draws near to me, my soul. Come, my beloved. Wake up, wake up, for your light has come. Awaken, awaken, sing a song for the glory of the God of the Lord is revealed to you. Come back, beloved. See, that is, don't you love this song? I mean, look at the words of this thing. Are you, uh, are you uh, somewhat happy, though, that I translated underneath the words? Yeah, yeah. 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 it's different. We're yes, it is a little bit different, but you know, this is the thing that even um, even uh, Chris, I'm not saying even Chris, but uh, you know, Chris comes to me and he says, I would like to know the uh, translation of the Lord's Prayer that we pray every week, the Hebrew translation. Well, I'm going to write that, I'm, I'm going to put that all down for you and but I'm gonna I'm gonna have lunch with you sometime, and we're going to sit for. Uh, and then, how many want to join us for lunch for that day? Okay, so my uh, we'll make a, make a note of that and put that out there. But uh, we will we will go someplace really nice and uh, eat Zio's pizza. And for uh, sure, don't you want to take over Zio's? How many of you like taking over Zio's pizza place? I. I'm all for it, you know. And uh, but anyway, it's a great way to um, um, share uh, is to look at this now because in the Lord's Prayer it talks about uh, temptation as burning, and and this is what Chris was interested in. He talks about that as burning. 
and and in, in, in the word that's used there is referenced in in uh, the scripture in other places but it's that burning how many of you have ever burned for something maybe you really didn't need it but boy oh boy you had to have it yearned burned i know but yearn might be that well thing. yearned yeah. but no it's it, it's actually burning it's I, actually well, that word is burn i know yeah that, i'm saying yeah but it is it is a yearning it is that um uh it's a strong very yes. very strong desire yes um i have to say that um i have had that happen to me and those things that that has happened to me i could not hold on to they seem to just go right through my fingers uh, for some reason. Now, at the top of this sheet, I sent out to all of you a song. And this is the Hebrew. I didn't translate it. I just wrote the Hebrew out. But the very first word is familiar to everyone in the room. It is what? Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> Shalom. And then the next word is friends. Chaverim. Yes. And the last word is we will see you later or till we see you again. Lehitraot. Lehitraot. So if I am, if I'm saying goodbye to um, Rita after the service, I can say, uh, Shalom Chavarim, Shalom Chavarim, Shalom, Shalom, Lehit Raot, Lehit Raot, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom Chavarim, Shalom Chavarim, Shalom, Shalom, Lehit Raot, Lehit Raot, Shalom. Shalom. So what have I said? Goodbye, dear friends. And I will see you later. I will see you again. It's I always call it the day the uh, Hebrew Dale Evans song. Roy Rogers. Oh. Till we meet again. I don't know. This is like the Roy Rogers song. In, uh, Jew, in, in amongst Jews, so but isn't that nice? You can walk up to somebody and say lehitraot, 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 and uh, you know, and uh, you know, I'm going to see you later. You know, um, so I can say that as instead of saying goodbye, which would be uh, shalom means hello, shalom means goodbye, shalom means peace, and a thousand other. And a lot of, it's like, like we talked about last week, Bebaka Shah, please. Um, slika, Slika means excuse me. And I'm always saying Slika, because I, I mess up a lot. Excuse me. Uh, klum, the Hebrew word Klum means absolutely nothing. <laughs> I mean, and that's what it means. <laughs> Plume means nothing. You know, you ask a teenager, what are you doing? Plume. How do you say amen in Hebrew? Amen. 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 Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a good question, though. You know, I... There is no bad questions, right? right. There isn't there's no bad questions. Um, here, and the next thing uh, is that in 2 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 30, uh, is the, the, the Hebrew word uh, for my God. You know, we all know Elohim. We all talk about Elohim, Elohim. But uh, this is uh, what? How do you say this one? Elohim. Elohai. Now you've heard that in a recent song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, so we we sing this. Elohai, but Elohai means my God. I like it because it's personal. 
Elohai. He's my personal God. You know, and so I like that. Now, at the bottom of this page is something that we're going to talk about for a while. But when Yeshua, in the, in, uh, like in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3 and verse 22, they said that, well, he has the spirit of Beelzebub, and that's how he, that's how he cast out devils, is by the spirit of Beelzebub. Well, it, it, for instance, it's not pronounced Beelzebub. It's, uh, I wrote it out in Hebrew. Beelzebub, right? Baal-Zavov. Zavov. 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 Yeah. Zavov. 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 Well, he's the Lord of the, Lord fly. Of the fly. Now, but we're going to read this because this is very important. How has some of these things entered into our country? Now, we invited the spirit of defiance into America. We invited it to come into America. And it was invited to come to New York in 2016. Now, th this is just newspaper knowledge, right? Anybody who reads the paper, you could have done it. Uh, in 2016, uh, they had um, a, they wanted to have a display in New York. Now, it didn't happen in New York in 2016. No. Because uh, they advertised it that they were going to be showing the uh, Arch of Baal in New York. They were going to be displaying the Arch of Baal in New York. Now, was it just the Christians that got upset about this? No. No, it wasn't just the Christians. How many of you know, who was it that destroyed the actual arch of Baal? And not too long ago either. Islam. Islamic extremists went at, in and destroyed the original. Then they made, a, they made a copy of it. Well, with today's technology, they can do that. This thing is 50 feet tall. Very exciting, huh? Mm -hmm. Now, but at least now you know the correct way to pronounce Beelzebub. But it is Baal. Now, Baal is a word that's used quite often. Lord. Baal Shem Tov, Lord. master Lord. of the good name. Mm -hmm. uh, Baal in, re in, in, uh, in respect to husbands and Lord. wives. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, it means... Uh, master or uh you know it can mean a lot of things like that but here and uh, so what the way it's defined is lord of the flies the dung god i love that the dung god because what does that attract flies. flies how about lord of filth same thing yeah um now baal is canaanite god mm-hmm a uh, deity worshipped by who? Philistines. Yeah, but the Philistines are known today as Palestinians. Palestinians. Right. Okay. Now, they so they couldn't put it up in New York because of all, but because of today's technology, they were able to uh, have it assembled in London, England. Toronto now, Square. Square. Where? Yeah. When it got to London, England, now this is so interesting. It was the day of Beltane or the fire festival. Okay. This is the day that the heathens uh, celebrated the throwing the children into the fire, mm -hmm. sacrificing children. Molech. Yep, to Molech. Okay. 
See, this is, so you're, you know, you guys are aware of a lot of this stuff. This is history. Okay. Now, so that was on, that's on the day, that's the day that they showed it in London, England. On that particular, and you know that there are people today that celebrate this uh, Beltane uh, festival, this fire festival. And uh, so the replica of the Arch of Baal uh, was displayed in London, England. And uh, this, you know what, it, it, it's referred to as a portal or gateway to the temple of Baal. The worship of Baal. Now, so sacrificing children is one of the aspects of, so what happened after 2016, did they, did they lessen the thing of abortion? Nope. No. And they actually said that if you have a child that was, you know, injured, uh, you know, fourth trimester abortion is a botched abortion, that and that child is born, actually is born, that you go ahead and uh, you have the right to go ahead and kill the child. I mean, that's how extreme this law is. Now, and of course, that, that, that gives you loopholes. But that came about after 2016 in this country. And where was it, where was that brought up at? New York. New York, New York. <laughs> now, it's not... The wonderful place, I don't... Uh, anyway, <laughs> I, I like New York because I know a lot of people that come from New York that are good people. And there's a lot of really uh, interesting things that do happen in New York. But this one wasn't that great. So, uh, it's, a, it's a portal or a gateway to the temple of Baal. But they advertised it as a symbol of freedom. Now, what is it freedom from? They never said that. What is it a symbol of freedom from? Freedom from babies. God. The worship of true God. Yeah. Freedom from the worship of true God. Yeah. Didn't they call it the Arch of Triumph to kind of, at first to kind of? Yes. Yes. It? Yes. Sure. And, and by the way, you all may be interested. Uh, there was on the opening day at Trafalgar Square. Yes. When they unveiled it. Yes. Um, there is a film of it on YouTube where you can see, and I swear on the Bible, you can see two black entities, real small dots with wisp behind them, come through the portal. Well, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's, I believe. That's what they did. That's As for me, I'm a believer. <laughs> hey, I'm a believer. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I'm the believer. They advertise it as a symbol of freedom. And I mean, there's a lot to this. Next, they displayed it in New York. Then it went from London to New York and then to Dubai. And then to Florence, Italy. I mean, they were able to assemble, disassemble, do all this. They can do all that quickly because of the technology of today. Now, this has with it the spirit of defiance. In 1 Kings 18, 17, Ahab, who is what? A worshiper of what? Baal. Baal, yeah. He called Elijah a troublemaker. And to him he was. Well, yes, he's a troublemaker to him. Yeah. But the thing is, is that who do you know in government that's being called the troublemaker? Trump. In this in this day and age. <laughs> well, and, and and I mean everywhere every time you turn around. Oh my gosh, it's just uh you know, and I know that there are Christians that don't like Trump. And I don't know if I understand everything he does. I don't, but I'm going to tell you something. As an old retired dude, I'm loving 
<coughs> what's happening to my bank account. <laughs> your retirement account. Well, my retirement. But you know something? I worked all those years for Medicare and all that, and now they want to give it to... Yeah. yeah. Legals. Oh, yeah. Everybody. So anyway, there is this, this spirit of defiance where here's Abra, uh, uh, Ahab calling Elijah, and I'm not, I'm not comparing Elijah to Donald Trump. Or Andrew, don't, oh, no. don't get me wrong here. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things about Elijah that I mean I can teach on Elijah. You know, I can't do the other. And then over here in Isaiah 5.20, now somebody turn to Isaiah 5.20, and it says, woe unto you. I mean, we're given a warning. And these are worshipers of Baal. And it tells you some of the things that come when this spirit of Baal comes into a country. I'm not trying to give anybody an excuse. But I am saying there is spiritual things at work. You know, Yeshua knew enough to know that it wasn't Peter. That it was a demon. That it was a spirit. And I know that as, a, as somebody that majored in psychology, that the way psychology books used to be put together, things were deviant behavior that now are not deviant behavior anymore. The DSM-5 oh, yeah. has changed. I am old school. I would tell you, my textbooks did not read the way the modern ones read. And, um, you know, I studied Glasser reality therapy, which is basically biblical therapy. I don't know if you're familiar with Glasser. If you're not, get his book. It's really, it's really great. Uh, but I, I you know, I, and I, I took all those classes, and I became very proficient with temperaments, which then later on in life, I found out was all through industry and every HR department and all of these things. And then I was able to show the people in HR where this is in the Bible and these scriptures dealing with these temperaments are all listed in scripture. Because God... It wasn't, it wasn't some, <coughs> it wasn't some other religion, you know, it wasn't some religion anyway. Uh, there, they, they had a quote in one of my textbooks and it said that this, uh, you know, rather well-known uh, religious figure, uh, which I'm not going to go into, uh, said, uh, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. <coughs> And the first thing in my mind was, well, it says that in Scripture. So as far as I know, the first to say it was the Bible and not this ancient religious figure, of which I don't want to go into. Anyway, anybody has that Scripture? Isaiah 5.20. Woe unto those who speak of evil as good and good as evil. Who make darkness into light and light into darkness. They make bitter into sweet and sweet into bitter. Points to Islam. And who, I mean, do you see this in our country today? Yes. There's so much more I could go, but I'm talking about here's Yeshua way back there, and he is talking about this uh, spirit. And he's talking about it, and people uh, have a, a hard time, a lot of them do, uh, associating that today. And then in, in the textbooks of today, they say, well, you know, uh, those religious zealots, you know, they'll say it's a demon or a demonic power. We know it's not, but, you know, it's... Uh, and they try to down-talk this kind of stuff. <clears throat> But I will tell you, I believe, I've seen it. I've seen it in operation. I've, uh, you know, uh, I've seen uh, people uh, calling people names. 
I've seen the, the what's happening uh, all through our me our media, everything, and the spirit of Baal is sensuality. It's all about the things that we're not supposed to talk about. Things of the flesh. Yeah, right. Yeah. And now all of that is out in the open. Nobody's even trying to hide it anymore. No need to hide it. It's all out in the open. That is all that spirit of Baal. Mm. And this is, you know, and of course in the uh, Greek text, you know, it says Beelzebub. But, you know, here in the Hebrew, we know how it's pronounced. But then we look at that and we go, wow, this is Lord Flies, Lord of the Flies, Lord of the Dung, Lord of the, you know, the stink. <laughs> this whole thing stinketh, right? Now. Well, I'm sorry, but it falls right in line with Hasatan being the prince of the power of the air. Well, it's absolutely. It's the atmosphere. Sure, absolutely. Anything that's above the grass, to yeah. this, you know, I'm just saying, this prince of the power of the air's domain. Do you mind uh, if we took this little journey? Because we're not, we're going to now go right into Isaiah 53. But I, yes. Also, the, when the, he cast out the nation of Israel and let the Canaanites live in that land, he said, I have to wait until they start doing something terrible before I take away from them. Yes. And what they were doing after that was when they started burning their babies. Yes. So that was the final straw. That was the, that was the end. And you know what? That there's a big price to be paid for this. When they when they in, uh, inject that uh, solution into, what does it do to the child? Burns. And that's what they they made that movie, The Silent Scream. Only it wasn't silent. And uh, don't get me going. <laughs> Let me go to Isaiah 53. I'm going to have a breakdown here. <laughs> they're, they're even doing now they're letting babies be born alive. Oh, I know. In Illinois, they have to send them to another room for another doctor to murder that child. Yes, and that and see then that was Obama. proclaimed legal by you know what happened Obama. in New York. Eighteen yeah. states now have that law, yeah. by the way. And I'm just gonna pose this question. Right. How much longer before retribution comes to this country? Because of that. Oh, if you don't think that retribution like, is here now, it's it's here now and it's coming. His hand is lifted. How many earthquakes have you We have had, uh, there's so much going on. If I was to go down through the news of late, yep. uh, you would be going, oh my gosh, yes. Because keep track of those things. There is a lot going on. I, uh, it will and, increase. And it, and, but it's going to increase. What does it say in the Revelation? This is it says it will the it will become more wicked, but it says the righteous will become more righteous. And so there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to see uh, without going into a lot of detail. There are things I mean that I'm aware of. We can already see it. And you can already see it happening. Here we are in Isaiah 53, the forbidden chapter. Now we're going to we're going to take a look at this. Um, the uh, in in verses 11 and uh, and 12, uh, you have this uh, word, um, and it's uh, Ramim. Rabim, Rabim, excuse me, Rabim. Uh, many or majority. And uh, it's kind of confusing to a lot of people. When they look at that, they go, well, uh, he's, uh, what, he's, uh, you know, he, he, he went through all of this just for many uh, or just a majority. Uh, no, no. Uh, when you... Um, when you look at verse 5, uh, here where it's, it's talking about um, um, him being uh, pierced, I want, you to, I want you to go to verse 5 with me. I, uh, 
I got. To, uh, we want to take a look at verse five in Isaiah fifty-three, because in verse eleven and twelve we have that word, uh, rabim, which means many or majority, uh, and yet um, now. I'm going to I'm going to give you a little addition, a little addendum here. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a an extra that you can write down uh, in Isaiah under Isaiah 53 and verse five, under that word for wounded, write down killed, K I L L E D, comma slain. I think it's a little clearer. Um, kalal. Kalal. Kalal to bore, to pierce, to kill. Um, they put that, uh, they got uh, uh, mecho, mecho, lao. Mekolau, Mekolau. Uh, see the O up there, the Holam? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, when you look that word up, you have uh, killed or slain. Uh, when you look at just the root word, uh, pierced or killed, uh, to bore or to, you know, like to bore a hole. Um, and so... Um, when you're looking at uh, Isaiah 53 and verse 5, let's look at that together. And um, I'm going to go over here. I want to bring that up. And it says uh, here, but he was wounded. And that's where it said, that's, that's the word we're looking at. In other words, he was killed. He was slain. He was pierced. You see how just knowing the extent of this word can change your understanding um, for our transgressions. Now, uh, he was bruised uh, for our iniquity. So is that transgression chatat? Huh? Is that chatat? No, pasha. Pasha? Yes. Which one is it? Pasha. The, uh, the transgression? Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is, um, uh, this is the, uh, the word that we have in here for transgression. I mean, oh, okay. it's... Sorry, I didn't know. I thought it was chatat. Huh? Chatat is what I thought it was. No, that. no. Okay. No. It's, uh... Um, M-E-P mm -hmm. we can pronounce it M-E-P S-H-A E and U for our transgressions but we're looking at the word wounded there not the other word okay so, the, and the, uh, tra the uh, chastisement of our peace, which you can see the word shalom in there, mm -hmm. and it, it has uh, shalom, and then it has uh, nu at the end. Uh, you have the S-H-L-O-M, shalom, uh, and, and then nu, which are our peace. Uh, upon him now so this um, well I just, I'm, I'm he's, so he's he's there and then let me let me go further with that uh, on on chapter 5 um, and just uh, not a piece upon him with his stri stripes we are healed too we are healed uh, upon him we are with his stripes we are healed now um, 
So it's it's not just when it's talking about the many or the or the majority, it's not like we we think in terms of the English. Um, in Isaiah 53, he talks about how that he bore the iniquities of us all, and that it, this healing is for all of us. And then later on, we see this, you know, for the many. Well, the many are the all. The many are the all. Now, um, in Isaiah 53 and verse 2, I want to take a look at that because that's, um, I had that little note there. We can see the Father and the Son here. Um, and uh, for he shall grow up as a tender plant before him. Before who? The Father. Before the Father. And as a root uh, out of the ground, the dry ground, out of the dry ground, uh, is not a form to him, no, and not his majesty. And we, uh, and when we see him, and not is appearance, beauty, uh, that we should desire him. He is. Um, he looks like everybody else. You know, he's not um, somebody that uh, stands out as uh, Mr. Beautiful. You know, he just a. Uh, normal looking guy you know he's not he's not head and shoulders above anybody yes he looks basically like a spirit like the father mm, that too no he's well i mean you don't see a spirit. form in him is what i'm saying it's interesting when you look at that yeah, i know but i'm just saying it also doesn't look like it. yeah thinking about a human in one respect. Yeah, yeah. So when you when you look at um, verse two and it says uh, the panav, and you realize that when you have the word when you have a word that ends in a yud bav, mm -hmm. the yud is silent. The yud is always silent. Now there are words that have a yud and a bav in them. But they also have nikud to go along with it. They have vowel sounds to go along with it. But here they don't. And so when you have like the word panav. Now panav, why, why the yud vav? This is an interesting thing. Panav is plural. Mm -hmm. Faces. Faces. Let me see your happy face. <laughs> Sad face. Concerned face. Mm -hmm. All your children have these faces. How many of you have seen those little things where they got the little circles and they got a whole bunch of different faces, you know? Well, that's basically what this is. There's the faces of God. And I'm going to tell you that I have a pastor friend, and if he looks at you with that, uh, you better go to your seat, buddy. Uh, you almost feel like crawling under the pew. I mean, he's, you know, and. Uh, I remember in uh, in his in his church, some little uh, child had misbehaved, and uh, the mother was taking the child to the back of the room, taking it out of the sanctuary, and the little child hollered, "Somebody pray!" Hallelujah, <laughs> 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 man! I mean, there was a, there was going to be a showdown out there, and, but she didn't want it in the sanctuary. <laughs> Ah, man. But how many of you had, you know, your dad had a face? Or your mom? My mom was big on making my mouth clean. I, yeah, well, I grew up with a very clean mouth. If I said anything, I got the old soap in the mouth trick. I came to hate ivory. <laughs> it was her soap of choice. 
Now, do I think I was abused? No, absolutely not. But I did have a clean mouth. Yay. <laughs> Mama saw to that. Now, here, I want you to, uh, want you to take a look at this. Um, I, we're just going to go down through a few things here. So the, uh, this, the, the son grows up in the presence of the father watching, uh, watching him uh, grow. And, uh, you know, he is, uh, he's like every other baby. Yeah, he didn't walk it one day, you know. Then he took off flying. No, he was just, he grew up. And uh, learned how to do different things, and uh, but he he was a uh, uh, the kind of child though that you know didn't go around using uh, bad language, and you know he was he did what his mother asked him to do, and what his dad wanted him to do, and you know he was a he was a good child, and he and it's hard to be the brother or the sister to a child like that. You know, he's he's good in all those areas, you know, but he's he's growing up and he he just looks like everybody else. He's not uh, doesn't have special looks or you know he doesn't have special clothing that uh, everybody uh, anybody should uh, you know be envious of him. Um, he doesn't have this appearance of beauty, but um, as a tender plant before him. Now, but the interesting thing here is uh, out of the ground as a root dry. Um, what was his source of nourishment? It was it natural? The will of the Father. Well, yeah, it's not, it, he's not... He's not getting the uh, the uh, nutrient uh, that stuff from the world. Nope. You know, butter he's and honey. Um, huh? Butter and honey. Well, he uh, when he was when he was born, he had butter and honey, so he would know to eschew evil or something like well, that. Well, they 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 do that with with the uh, when they're going through their bar mitzvahs and stuff. Uh, that's uh, but uh, you know. You can't give honey to a baby. Yeah, you can't it's give poison. honey to a baby. But honey, uh, you know, honey's good. Honey's good, but it's not for a baby. Uh, anyway, <laughs> do not give your baby honey. <laughs> oh, my. Well, they did that for my brother. They gave him beer. And because uh, he was born in Panama. And they, they had a thing down there that they did. And, so my brother Michael is a Pan Panamanian. You know. <laughs> my mother said that you could hear the Panthers uh, yelling at night. Uh, and she was all alone because Dad was at sea, uh, being Navy. So anyway, uh, here you see the Father and the Son in that verse. Now in verse 7, he is depicted as a lamb. And of course, remember in verse 1, what is the arm of the Lord? The shank bone. The shank bone of the lamb. How do you say it? The roa. The roa. And that's the same as what you have on the Seder plate, where the shank bone of the lamb is placed. Now, so in verse 7, he's depicted as a lamb. And of course, in John 1 29, behold the lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. So, the lamb who took our place. That's what I wrote down here. Now, he will sprinkle many nations. And the, I put that underlined many. Um, uh, this is Isaiah 52 and, and verse 15. Mm -hmm. That he will sprinkle many nations. And of course, that is that same word that is used... In Isaiah 11 and 12, or 53, uh, Isaiah 53, 11 and 12, um, Rabin, uh, Rabin, many, majority, uh, laid upon him the iniquity of us all is in Isaiah 53 and verse 6. 
And that's what I was getting, uh, getting to is that when you look at that in, the, in some of these verses where it talks about the many, but then he also uses the, uh, that, that he, is, he bore the iniquity of us all. So the many are the all. Uh, you know, don't, uh, there are people that look at that and they say, well, uh, evidently, um, this is like, um, oh, what is the, uh, what is the religious, uh, Christian religious persuasion that, uh, you know, says everything is um, predestined to uh, oh, yeah. Calvinism. 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 And so, and they will allude to that with the, the many here. But uh, that doesn't really work because this is one chapter, and in the chapter, he's uh, uh, laid on him the iniquity of us all, the transgressions of my people, and who is uh, the people of God? Israel. Israel. So this isn't talking about Israel, it's talking about a person. Um, the transgressions of my people are laid upon him. The transgressions of Israel. So Israel isn't bearing the transgressions of Israel. <laughs> no. Okay. So he said he will justify the many. But don't be confused. It's not the many is many uh, that we would think in English because it's already been defined that he bears the, the iniquity of us all. So he will justify the many. I got uh, what I see out of that. Yes. Uh, he bore the uh, punishment of Adam and Eve. That sin is what condemned us all. And, and so the transgressions of uh, Israel was from Adam and Eve. So he came to redeem Adam and Eve's sin. He does this, uh, yeah. that, that, but that's not um, what he, because there's no mention of any of that I, 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 in yeah, here. I, I, oh. So we don't... Uh, Yes. Me, are you saying that the word rabim means many and all? Mm -hmm. No, it, but it's not to be confused. When you're looking at this chapter 53, it's one chapter. Mm -hmm. He's not saying one thing in one verse and another thing in another verse. Mm -hmm. Sorry. When he says that he bore the iniquity of us all, and then it says he bore the iniquity of the many. The many is the all. Mm -hmm. okay. It's not that it's being defined that way. Gotcha. But it's talking about the many as, all. you know, the many that are in this room. All of us. All of you. Say that's all of us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, now, it can mean, in some instances, majority. The more part. Yeah. So you have, you know, that's why it, you want to make sure that the word interprets the word. You know, not try to read anything into it that's not there. He is, set, we are set free from the sin in the garden. Right? Yeah. Absolutely, we know that. And this is talking about that. Now, he bore the sins of many will justify the many. He sprinkles the many. Well, the many are the all. He, he's laid upon him the iniquity of us all. So it, it means that I personally can be saved because God loves me and he doesn't love Chris. <laughs> and so Chris is part of the many, but I'm part of the all. No, it doesn't mean that, does it? No. no, that would be that would be crazy. That would be ludicrous. So when you're reading the Hebrew text, you have to understand that this has to be interpreted. The word has to interpret itself. 
And so it's, say, it's saying, there is no difference between me and Chris. He died for me. He died for him. He is the shank bone of the lamb for Chris as well as me. But then it goes into a whole explanation in the Berit HaKadoshah. And it says that those that will not accept the sacrifice, then that's on them. Is that why it's Rabim rather than Kol? Well, see, this is this is one of this would be a good explanation. There are those that do not accept what is offered to all. Right. See, if you wait long enough, it comes to you. Can we see this? Not everybody accepts it. Some people literally just spit in the face of it. And then they wander around in other nations for years and years and years until they're allowed to come back to Israel. They rejected the sacrifice of Messiah, which was for them, as well as for you. And they become part of the, the many. There is that sense in which this happens. Yes, I did this, you know, Yeshua. Yeshua did this for all. But not all are accepting it. Very, how many of you in your own families have someone in your own family that has not and will not and seems to be just breaks on, will not come near this with any thing at all? They just, and, but is it there for them? Yes. Could they become part of the all? Yes. yes. And if they all did that, would they be the all? <laughs> Absolutely true. Hallelujah. So here we have NASA. Not N NASA. But <laughs> NASA. NASA is where he carries the sins of others. NASA. He's carrying the sins. How about Nazeh, Nazah, Nazah, sprinkle. These are the notes just below that. What verse? 11. Uh, 12, 12, 12. For him carrying, he bore, he carries. Six maybe? Uh, if you go over to this sheet, remember Gary? This sheet here? Yeah, this is the sheet that gives you the scriptures where that Hebrew word is used. Uh, Nisah is, is used in verse 4 and verse 12 where he carries the sins. Uh, he's like the Azazel. Uh, the, the sins are laid upon the head of Azazel. Uh, and in Leviticus 26 and verse 39, it says that if you don't receive the offering for your sin as being for your sin, then you will bear your own sin. And part of the bearing of that sin is that you will wander in other nations you will be cast out of this nation and go to, you'll be wandering in other nations, <laughs> Russia, all these other nations <laughs> for all those years. And that's in uh, Leviticus 26, 39. Now, Nassah, Leviticus 5, 17, it talks about that you shall carry 
the iniquity of you know your the the uh, your iniquity you shall carry that the um the phrase in in uh in Isaiah 53 is boha asham boha asham and you can find I can you know we'll we'll look at that in the in the uh, Hebrew text bo the one who bears the iniquity boha asham this is talking about Boha Hasham. He carries the iniquity of others. Not his own iniquity. He has no iniquity. He bears the iniquity of us. Of all of us. As many as will receive him. To them gives he power to become the sons of God even them that believe on his name. So, very exciting when you look at that. But, um, Naza, sprinkle, this is like on the day of Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, and it says the high priest will go in and sprinkle the blood of the sacrifice on the mercy seat. Now, who is our high priest? Yeshua. Yeshua has become our high priest. He is our high priest. And so this is what he does. He does this. Now, the interesting thing I want to show you in Isaiah 39, or 33, I mean 53, Isaiah 53, verse 9 I don't want to get dyslexic here on you. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now, when it says, and he made with the wicked his grave and with the rich in his death. <laughs> the word death here, what does it end in? Yud Vav. The Yud is silent. The Yud Vav shows you what? Is it talking plural. about a singular death? Plural. It's talking about a plural death. Messiah dies a plural death. In other words, he dies my death. He dies Sam's death. He dies Mark's death. I'm just going down to the guys. I haven't excluded you ladies. Oh, thank you. <laughs> he dies Teresa's death. Uh -oh. Amen. Amen. Arlene's death. I'm not going to go down through. I'm going I'm to get dry again here. But it's plural. The word here for death is plural, not singular. It was translated singular. <clears throat> Was that good of them to do that? No. It changes the meaning. Whatever happens to the Messiah happens to us. Is what that means. Yeah. We have he, to die. We he have to die took himself. our death right. upon him. Mm -hmm. He died for us. And so because he died for all of us, he died plural deaths. Now, everyone in here knew that already, didn't they? No. The, the reason that we know this is because of the way it's spelled. It's plural. And so, we have that right here, you know, in our translation. And we have the Hebrew text, and we have the translation. Be, be, mo, be, be, motav. 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 be, you don't make Aliyah, you make Aliyah. Don't run everything together. They're syllables. 
So when you do the syllables, I'm like the monkey with the clapping thing. <laughs> One of my Jewish friends told me, it's all about the accent, but uh, Hanukkah. Yeah, Hanukkah. Where you put, how you do the syllables. The syllables. Watch <laughs> those apples for you. Yeah, it's the syllable. So I have a lot of people, and they will be coming to it, and they will end up going, uh, oh, I want to make uh, Aliyah. <laughs> Aliyah. Aliyah. I want to go up. Aliyah. I want to go up. You make Aliyah to the Bima. What is the pulpit called in our service? Bima. Bima. The Bima. See, this is why we need you. You know, you need to know Bima. So you make Aliyah to the Bima. So have, has, uh, has a Rabbi ever called you up? Yes. To the Bima. Yes. Instead of pulling you down into the pit, they call you up to the Bima, right? So, and when you get to Tel Aviv, you go, Aliyah, Yerushalayim. That's right. And boy, is it up Aliyah. the hill. Aliyah. You know, my favorite thing is where they, they, you go to where they pushed Azazel over the cliff. Okay. This is great. Here you are in Israel. And you go to the cliff. Lou's been there many times. They push a zazel over the cliff. Eh, you know. They don't want a zazel coming back into the camp. Here comes our sins! <laughs> this is not good, right? So, they have this cliff, well, they have a, they have a chapel up there in the side of this cliff. And if you want to, I will put you in the bucket and go, okay. <laughs> there goes Mark. Now, as you're being hoisted up into that place, what are Islam doing on down there below? <laughs> Shooting at the bucket, which you're in. So they, when somebody asked me, do you want to go in the bucket up to the, up to the little chapel thing, you know, the place up there? No, no, I pass on there. Because <laughs> this is the road down to Jericho. Mm -hmm. no, you're, you are up high, and I'm going to tell you, those little children on the donkeys with their little electrical cords whacking the donkey, uh, they go really fast yeah. down that hill. You don't have to run the bus. Just sit at the top and go. I mean, it is downhill. And you get down there and there's really one of the oldest olive trees anywhere. I think, I think Zacharias. Or <laughs> I think Zacchaeus. <laughs> he was in that tree, I knew. <laughs> but anyway, he dies multiple deaths. So it's not singular, it's plural. So is that important? Is that important to know yeah. that it's uh, it's plural and not singular? Well, I think it is. I think it's very important um, that we that we uh, we have that, and I think it's very important this whole thing of uh, uh, naza uh, to sprinkle naza. Uh, because uh, on uh, it's in two syllable na sa, uh, so don't try to make it naza one yeah. Don't do that. And like in like in like uh, like I said before, uh, even on the uh, uh, naza uh, nasa 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 not na, not nasa right. Even though they carry astronauts. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's a, it's a right word, but uh, yeah, we don't want to we don't want to go there. Okay. So, but it's two syllables, 
And we want to make sure we do the syllables and that we have that because uh, uh, that's, you know, that's the correct way to do it. But then see, now you have a little more information. Yeah. You still have all of this information over here on this page, you know, with some of these other words, um, you know, dealing with Isaiah 53. Um, you know, because that's all part of the same study. Um, and uh, especially the sacrifice, the sacrificial lamb, uh, which is used um, 17 places in Scripture. And what is one plus seven? Eight. And what number is that? New beginnings. New beginnings. So what happens with the sacrifice, sacrificial lamb? You start over. You get a you get a do over. You get a start over. It's the secret. Yeah. Word. So it's very exciting. But the Hebrew word for lamb is the sin. It's not a shin. So it's just an S. It's a sin, and then you have segol underneath that, which is the E H sound, and then you have the hay. Well, since you already have the E H sound, it's just it's just that uh, S E H sound, okay? So how would you say that for se. lamb? Se. 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 Lamb. Se. And it and so it's used seventeen times in there. Well, um, this is uh, now a bone. A bone is iniquity, you know, and you and you knew that. So a bone is iniquity, and that's used in Isaiah fifty three. Five and six, a bone, but it, it can be spelled a couple of different ways. I mean, it, it it's spelled actually one way, but the whole lam, the whole lam can be just the dot, or it can be the vav with the dot above it. The whole lam can be either one, but it's still the same. It's the whole lam. It's just uh, the o sound, right? Uh, a bone, a bone, iniquity. And then, so he carries what? The iniquity of us all. So you shouldn't probably see the Avon lady, right? Avon well, lady. <laughs> if we want to run that all together, that's probably what we would have. People saying Avon. You know? so, yeah, he carries the Avon. <laughs> Avon. 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 <laughs> yeah, we have to watch that, don't we? Yes. You know, make sure you do the what? Again, the syllables. Because <laughs> otherwise it's sinful makeup. You know what I mean? Oh, oh <laughs> my gosh, yeah. Okay, okay. Ay, 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 ay. ay, ay, ay. Don't adorn yourself now, with jewelry boy, and man. makeup. No. You know, this is the thing uh -huh. is that um, he is, uh, when, it's, when it talks here, that he's, you know, buried with the rich man and he's, he dies between, you know, he dies uh, with the wicked. He, he made, his death is with the wicked. This didn't happen for 800 more years. When this was, when this was in prophecy, you know, it's 800 years before this took place. This is a long time, isn't it? Took a while. Took a while. So, you know, we're, we're looking at something. But then, when he does that and he, and he addresses the other um, uh, person who deserved to be up there, to be uh, nailed to that tree, um, he, uh, he die, he's dying for that man too, isn't he? Yes. So not only does he die, but he takes on the death of that individual too. And then when you look at this, you can look at it because there's no punctuation. Mm -hmm. Today I say unto you, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Or today thou shalt be in paradise. Uh... You know, I kind of think that it's probably the first one, you know, mm -hmm. today I say unto you, 
thou shalt be with me in paradise. Uh, this, uh, you know, this is uh, a wonderful uh, thing to study, and and we're going to be looking at because in verse one um, we have a lot of really interesting things taking place with the shank bone of the lamb. Uh, we also have uh, a lot of references to that, and especially that uh, that is talked about in uh, in Isaiah 50, as well as uh, uh, in other places. And uh, and then we see quite a quite a few times where it's talking about the face of God, and it and, and we see that the plural there uh, before him. Uh, he grew up before him. He grew up before him. And here, um, it, when it says before him, it's using the word uh, uh, panav, mm -hmm. le panav, uh, le panav. Face to face to face. Yeah, face to face. Face to face. It's really interesting, isn't it? His face grew up before the Father's face. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's you know, when it says before him, uh, I like I like the fact that it's you know he grew up face to face with his father. This is exciting to me. You know I I, I think that um, um, you know we can have all kinds of uh, uh, wonderful pictures of this in our mind, um, and I'm going to um, now you have a son. And he's a beautiful little guy. But he has a very special relationship with his father. Yes, very well. And so he is growing up <laughs> in this same kind of context, knowing the faces of his father. Do you understand all of the implications of this? There are fathers that will tell you um, that they really don't un they really don't know their son, and and then they really doubt if their son really knows them. My son arrived just the other day. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to sing that verse, <laughs> but I mean, boy, Harry Chapin really had a had a message, didn't he? You know, I've heard that sung in churches. I, I really have. Um, yeah. Uh, but all of a sudden, if you don't spend time with your son, your son doesn't begin to know your faces. Your son doesn't know your faces. Um, you know, I... Um, I made a decision when I was uh, very young, my wife and I, that I would work no matter how many jobs. I would do whatever it was that, sh that the children would have a mother. And uh, now I'm not, I'm not going one way or the other on that because uh, I'm, I've got uh, you know, a lot of ladies that uh, have jobs and that they, it's wonderful. I, I'm not saying one way or the other about, it. but I want I wanted for my household uh, it to be uh, like the household that I grew up in, and I did not know uh, how deprived of my father I was. He was Navy, and he was all over the world, and he was in Cuba, and he was uh, he was in a lot of places, you know, and. And uh, he would always bring us things. And he would write me letters and tell me that I was the man of the house. <laughs> and uh, so I grew up thinking that, you know, it, maybe it's a better thing that uh, I just be working all the time. And uh, that uh, they hardly saw me. People say, well, did you and your wife have arguments? I was never there. 
<laughs> you have to understand something. One of the things that I was, was I was youth pastor, remember Fifth Avenue United Methodist Church assistant pastor, and then mechanical engineer, and a lot of hats. And so my one daughter, my oldest daughter, she had a t-shirt made and it said Nanner Jr. on it. She had her own t-shirt made. And she got one for me and mine said Nanner. I have no idea what Nanner means. But she, uh, and she, when we were in youth group, she sat right beside me. This is my dad. Maybe you're a youth pastor, but this is my dad. Well, it was funny because uh, uh, we would go to camp or anything, you know, she was always right there. Uh, and, I, and so I, I, I kind of learned from her uh, how important maybe uh, I was to the family. Uh, and so I tried to spend a little more time with the children doing projects with my son for scouts or whatever, you know, and uh, trying to do that so that, what? So that he would learn the faces of his dad. Well, you, Yeshua grew up knowing the faces of the father. Is that, is that important? Is that powerful? Is that speak to you as a parent or as a as a human being yeah the beauty of that is what i see when you say that in the gospels and in the torah is that um you know yeshua looks exactly like his father they can't be told apart you know in a way same thing with if it. you've seen me you've seen the father so I, that's what i mean so i understand face, to face that I have the wisdom my father gave me because I learned exactly what right. he is, what he it has does. nothing to do with his physical okay. appearance in that sense. Yeah, but right. if you see him, if right. you really see him, you're going to see the, the father. father. Same thing with Abraham and Isaac. They yeah. said that Isaac looked so much like Abraham. When you spoke to Abraham, you spoke to Isaac. When you spoke to Isaac, you spoke to Abraham. Yeah, they're. Um, yeah, I love the, the name uh, for Isaac Yitzhak. Mm -hmm. yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it means laughter. Yeah, so. <laughs> um, so you have um, you have all of these pictures that are in here. Um, and uh, what I want you to do uh, between now and, and next Monday is to go through those um, verses and, and looking at those Hebrew words, you know, like for sprinkle and carried and, and all of these little concepts that we have written out here and get a feel for all of that because what we're going to start to do next is we're going to read through Isaiah 53. We're going to read it. Read through the... Uh, the uh, the scriptures read through the Hebrew uh, text and uh, and talk about it as we go along. Is that okay with you that we do that? That will be uh, that'll be we'll get started on that next week. We may not be able to go more than uh, three verses in one evening. I don't know, but how many of you know that the book of Isaiah? Chapter the chapter fifty three of Isaiah is verse one, two, and three, and then it's verse four, five, and six, and then it's verse seven, eight, and nine, and then it's ten, eleven, and twelve. It's they're all divided up into verses of three. The whole thing, the theme. The themes are divided into three, uh, three verses each. That's why you only read the three and put your name in there. Those three are that personal. The other ones uh, deal with some other things. And um, we're going to talk about that a little bit. But 
this is the thing is that you look at these first three verses and they speak to us in a certain way then we go to the next three verses and they speak to us in a different way and then the next three and the next three and then finally the last three and there is a theme behind each one of those categories and so I want you to look at that you know be looking at that during the week you know and um, um, it was interesting to me I went online and I I, I went to this uh, website or this uh, YouTube thing and there were these three Irish uh, Baptist pastors <laughs> And they were talking about Isaiah 53, and they didn't agree on anything. I, I think you have a, a very good point there, but, but uh, I don't agree with that. I see it. This is the way I see it. <laughs> and they all, all three of them, I mean, they, no, they didn't agree on any, any aspect of the entire thing. You know? and they, they, but they all had interesting little insights. I thought they were interesting. Uh, they didn't understand the mystery of verse 1 at all. And if you understand the mystery of verse 1, which you do, it's the shank bone of the lamb, which ties it to what? Pesach. Which ties it to the sacrificial lamb which ties it to Beit Lechem, which is where the temple lambs are born. Beit Lechem, Bethlehem. All the temple lambs were taken care of. They were born at Beit Lechem. House of bread? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. And that's where the temple lambs were raised. It is only as the crow flies six miles from the temple site. <laughs> huh? Go ahead. Yes, the creation. That's why man is the number six. Yes. Created on the sixth day. So what we have... Uh, when we look at some of these things, is really some uh, interesting things. So when you when you get to um, the fact that all of these things, you know, here's this is where the temple lambs are born. These are where the temple shepherds are at. Um, uh, this is the uh, uh, and what is the most joyous time of the year, according to Scripture, where God literally commands you to be joyful. To party. Save up your money and party. Sukkot. Sukkot. That's right. Sukkot. The only place where you're commanded to be joyful. Now, how many of you have watched the Israeli film on Sukkot? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, what's the name of it? Uh, 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 oh, what's the name? Well, let me name. Who the name of the Ushpizin. Now, remember that because uh, in order to watch this film, you have to be able to uh, uh, read li Hebrew lips. <laughs> no, it it has it all in there, but it's uh, an amazing film about Sukkot. Mm -hmm. and you are commanded to be joyful it's a command of God what are the angels in heaven singing joyfully joyfully joy this is they are proclaiming joy that's right if you had no other clue as to when he was born Sukkot you would have to know that it was Sukkot. This is the only time of the year when God the Father says, you will be joyful. I don't care if your father passes away during this time. I Remember, that's what the rabbi said. His dad died 
and he couldn't do Shiva. Mm -hmm. He couldn't do any of that because he's commanded by God to be joyful. Mm -hmm. I remember. He can't cover up the mirrors. He can't rip his shirt. He can't do any of this stuff. He can't count Shiva. When 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 uh, when Nate, his father, died, and uh, we, we were the first day that you just talked yeah, about. Yeah, that's what he's talking oh, about. Oh yeah, he couldn't do that. But uh, I was there with him when when that happened. <laughs> you know, and the bus driver, bus driver said, "You you, you can't mourn your mourn for your father. Now, this is <laughs> time you can't do it." Lou brings up a good point. When you're in Israel, um, your guide is Jewish. Your bus driver is what? Arab. Arab. Arab, yes. Yes, he was. Our Arab bus driver <coughs> took us to his house. Yes. And gave us tea. And uh, we had a great time with him. Um, but he was, um, they were... They were practicing Christians. And they made no bones about it, but they're surrounded by people. Now, you will see strange things in Israel. You will see people wearing pants with a big pocket. Between their legs. Between their legs. <laughs> and uh, it's a certain sect over there. And uh, they, they have this belief that uh, man is going to give birth to the Messiah. And uh, so the bag is to catch the baby. Um, oh my. So far in all these years, that has never happened. And it won't happen. Drew. Oh, yeah. Science, science said they're going to work with it. Where That's do right. they come up with that? Yeah, so yeah we, science are working this on this. Isaiah 52.10 yeah, says, Adonai has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all nations and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Is That's the same shank bone. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. The arm of God. He had mm -hmm. bore, bore his arm. Yeah. And then we put it on the plate. <laughs> and we put it on the plate. <laughs> and blow it in the freezer for next year. Uh, mine is shellac. Oh, you don't have to throw out the freezer. Mine's all dried out. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so we're going to uh, cut this one a little short. Because I am really running out of energy. It's okay. But and I thought that... Um, certain people were going to be here tonight to download their software onto their computer, and they didn't come. So now that they're not here, I don't know what to do. Um, here is the um, where did where did it go? Ah, uh, no, that's mine. That's mine. Um, Oh, here, here it is. Well, to give it to people. I've got a correlation. I've got a